Hey guys, in this video, I want to discuss with you how estrogen contributes to brain aging and degeneration. At first glance, the concept of brain aging might seem like a very complex and therefore daunting subject. It's made out to be, at least in scientific literature, that the brain is this very mysterious organ that we know little or nothing about. And that might certainly be true. There might be tons about the brain that we don't know about. But at the end of the day, the brain is an organ. And like any other organ in our body, including the skin tissue, we do know a lot about what contributes to the degeneration or the aging of that tissue and that organ. So we do know some simple things about what can contribute to the aging of any particular organ, including the brain. And at the top of those contributing factors is the stress of aging. So the fact of the matter is aging is a stress. And over time, even the healthiest of individuals will experience some sort of oxidative stress and damage just from living life. There are tons of oxidative stressors in our living experience, our live dynamic environment, and these over a very long period of time, 80 years or so, will ultimately lead to some sort of damage. This is very natural. And I point this out because when we look at what happens to an organ like the brain over a lifespan, we see very visible changes to the actual structure of the brain. Basically, the brain becomes smaller and smaller as we age. So there's some sort of deterioration or catabolism happening to the actual brain tissue, which causes vascular changes and of course, neurological changes. So as the structure of the brain starts to change and ultimately become smaller, this negatively affects cognitive function. So as complex as brain aging seems, just like any other tissue and organ, ultimately what's happening to that particular organ is the tissue or the structure of it has become compromised. It's becoming damaged. And in the case of the brain and a lot of the internal organs, they start to shrink. So what I'm getting at is ultimately brain aging is directly related or parallel to the shrinking of the brain, which damages the brain. And this is a fundamental piece of information to understand when discussing brain aging. Because now from this point, we can start to ask the questions, well, what contributes to the shrinking of the brain? What physically damages our brain other than the stress of aging? And once we figure out those specific things, because we can't necessarily fight the stress of aging in the sense of, we can't slow down how many years we want to live. We're not going to just end life sooner just to avoid the stress of aging. So instead, the most productive thing we could do is take a look at the various factors, environmental lifestyle factors that contribute to the stress of aging and modulate our lifestyles from that point to reduce added stress that would contribute to brain aging and aging overall. So we hear about all sorts of things that are supposedly contributing to brain aging and therefore things that we should avoid or minimize if we want to reduce the risk of accelerated aging. However, there's one particular hormonal culprit, which is estrogen, that is at the root of most of these pathological events and changes that contribute to brain aging on a molecular and structural level or a cellular level in this case. So moving along, a second vital piece of information to understand in regards to brain aging is what's happening cellularly that contributes to the shrinking or the destruction or degradation of the brain. And ultimately, that is the brain and the brain cells in particular being starved of energy. If your brain cells cannot produce and get adequate ATP, the brain is going to start degenerating and dying off. And ultimately what's occurring on the cellular level during brain aging is that the brain cells are using much more energy than they are capable of producing. This leads to the starvation of that brain cell and ultimately cell death. And because the organ that is the brain is made up of cells, if the brain cells start to die, then the brain as an organ starts to die or atrophy as well. So in fewer words, brain aging is an energy issue. Meaning that when the brain cell is not getting enough energy, when it's using more energy than it actually is capable of producing, then the brain cell is starved. And because your brain and all organs are made up of cells, if the cells that make up the brain are starving and dying off, that means the brain is going to physically also degenerate or deteriorate. So at this point, we need to ask ourselves a third question. What causes our brain cells to not be able to properly produce enough energy. And there are many contributing factors to this, 
Anything that ultimately induces a stress response can contribute to this, which is why there are so many causative factors for increased risk of brain aging and things like Alzheimer's disease. But on a very cellular level, the hormones are very involved in whether or not this process is going to occur normally or abnormally. And one of the major hormonal culprits that impairs the brain cell's ability to produce energy is estrogen. In fact, there are experiments that have found that if you inject the brain with estrogen, even bioidentical estrogen, that can kill off a large portion of the brain cells immediately. And this is because of one primary negative effect that estrogen has on any tissue in the body which is that it actually impairs proper energy metabolism or cellular respiration. So what estrogen does, and I say this so many times in these videos, is it actually steals oxygen from the mitochondria of the cell. And because of this, it impairs something known as cellular respiration, which is a fundamental process involved in the production of cellular energy or ATP. Without oxygen, then the brain cell cannot actually oxidize or metabolize glucose. And this is what causes the brain cell to become starved and ultimately die off. So estrogen, in other words, leads to inefficient cellular metabolism, where without the use of oxygen, the cell rapidly uses up its glucose, leading to this energy deficient state that we were talking about, where the cell is actually using way more energy than it's capable of producing. And on a systemic level, this actually leads to the depletion of brain glycogen. Now, why is this an issue? Other than the brain cell being starved off and ultimately dying, on a broader range sense, the brain is actually one of the most glucose dependent organs in your whole body. Meaning that your brain, more than your liver, more than your heart, more than any other tissue or organ in the body, uses so much glucose on a daily basis that once its glucose stores, aka glycogen, are depleted, the brain starts to experience major oxidative stress. In fact, once brain glycogen is depleted because of the effects of estrogen, there is an actual stress response that occurs in the body. The depletion of brain glycogen actually stimulates the pituitary to release ACTH and the adrenals to secrete cortisol. Now cortisol in of itself, when the brain glycogen is depleted, is gonna start catabolizing the brain tissue in an attempt to make sugar. Now this is helpful for the survival of the brain, but over time, through this process, there's an increased liberation of free fatty acids. And those free fatty acids actually further impair the brain cell's ability to uptake glucose. And this is a major contributing factor to things like diabetes and why Alzheimer's is considered type three diabetes. So this is specifically how estrogen can induce the stress response that's involved in all forms of brain aging and brain degeneration, and how it can contribute to things like diabetes and to various neurodegenerative issues like Alzheimer's. So obviously estrogen is not the only cause for this. Any sort of extreme stress could actually stimulate the same process. But in this way, estrogen is actually a stress hormone. And what I think is one of the major contributing factors to the increased risk of things like diabetes, Alzheimer's, and a lot of the diseases that we're seeing on the rise today. Now the good news is there's simple things that you can do to correct this process. Unlike the stress of aging, Controlling your exposure to estrogen and your body's ability to metabolize estrogen is something that's totally in your control. And we actually have tons of free resources here on the YouTube channel that can teach you how to do that. But just while I have you here, I'm just gonna point out that nettle root, this herb right here, is actually one of the most powerful anti-aromatase or anti-estrogen herbs that you can get your hands on. So one simple place to start would be supplementing with nettle root to start to minimize the amount of estrogen that's accumulating in your body and in your tissues. So that's a fantastic herb for doing that, but keep in mind, you're also gonna to wanna to learn these other things in regards to diet and lifestyle to minimize the estrogen for a very effective and thorough approach. Anyways, that does bring this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're new here and you wanna see more videos just like this. And remember, don't forget to watch those other videos to get some tips on how to reduce your estrogen exposure and how to eliminate that estrogen from the body. And if you're also interested in supplementing or learning more with that nettle root, you can find that on our online tonic herb shop along with our blog and our online wellness academy in the description box below.